Thank you very much, dear colleagues, for uh, attending this lecture, which has a topic which already uh, struck me from the beginning since I was working in Jordan uh, and uh, a discussion came up about megasites together with Gary Rollison. Um, after more <clears throat> when uh, 15, 16 years, the topic receives some, uh, uh, deserves some update. Um, and I'm going to present this update uh, to you today. So now I have a problem. Yeah. Um, the term mega, uh, I, ha I have to say that it's uh, 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 the nature of such a lecture that um, one has to work with working pieces. So many of the statements are in a thesis uh, manner. Um, and uh, secondly, um, I have, since this is going to be published online in the YouTube channel, uh, 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 avoided to um, to give keywords, but to uh, present clear sentences in order to avoid misunderstandings. <clears throat> uh, the early understanding of the megasite phenomenon um, until uh, twenty ten um, has um, has to be revised in in many ways but not in uh, its basic uh, understanding. The term megasite was uh, uh, promoted by, by Gary and me uh, since the late 80s, early 90s, um, and was permanently uh, offered in uh, the debate by both of us in lectures uh, until 2004. Um, uh, when I uh, <clears throat> made a publication uh, in more details about the term and its meaning in uh, central uh, to what. Uh, that time, uh, the major characteristics claimed for the megasite phenomenon was um, um, that Jericho and possibly similar sites were understood as stimuli uh, for uh, territorial pressure uh, pouring into the Transjordanian highlands. Um, not really, at least I was not claiming that it was a greater uh, major uh, relocation of people, uh, but, but simply uh, uh, developmental uh, concepts uh, and territorial pressure that made uh, megasites appearing quite quickly within generations in the Eastern Highlands. Um, it was stated also that uh, megasite populations may have reached 2000 um, and created progressive um, population dynamics uh, resulting in aggregation and uh, agglomeration on all levels not only architecturally, but also in the crafts system and the social organization, even uh, the intangible cognitive territories were witnessing this aggregation and agglomeration. Um, at the same time, already by that time and without having the, uh, the great results of Waila Boasisa and his team, in the East, um, I stated that the attractiveness and the richness of the Eastern steppes uh, was uh, uh, one of the reasons why these megasites could grow, uh, resulting then in the early uh, pastoralism and hun hunting of wild angulates. But uh, still that time, the idea was that hunting wild angulates uh, was done by shepherds uh, who uh, incursed the Eastern steppes from the megasites. 
that we have own subsistence economies like now proven uh, of uh, herders and hunters out there was not known by that, <clears throat> by that time. Another uh, uh, thing that was clear that the mega sites reached 15 to 20 hectares, that they um, always are near rich springs um, and that they hardly had subordinate settlements. They were central, but they had, they had not a centrality function. Um, the, uh, also, it was clear that uh, extended households uh, must have um, uh, ruled the social organization of these mega sites, um, uh, different from the MPPNB settlements we had before in the area of the Jordanian Highlands. Uh, showing sizes of maximum three to four hectares. Um, the, also, it was claimed uh, until 2010 that uh, a hypertrophic aggregation and agglomeration processes and the limited habitats in which the megasites were uh, flourishing uh, led to an early collapse in some cases, maybe even after uh, a few generations or less than 10 generations um, and led to splitting uh, social structures, uh, uh, meaning this emergence of a step pastoral societies um, and uh, large corporate farming societies uh, in the West, especially. Uh, this was a statement made already uh, before encountering uh, Mozart or understanding Mozart. Uh, I should say that megasite phenomena are nothing new in the Near Eastern Neolithic. We have megasites, maybe not as uh, large uh, uh, scale uh, occupations in regions. Um, the earliest I, um, un, I know or understand is the Morebi Torebe uh, Abu Huraira uh, complex. Um, the mega site corridor in the L, of the LPPNB um, has received some new working thesis. Um, in the last years, especially through the Household and Debt Project uh, uh, for Baja, um, meaning saying that the late pre pottery Neolithic B megasite phenomenon uh, in the Jordanian Highlands cannot be seen anymore as an uh, isolated, prosperous, and regional episode that it was a, a part of a complex, supra-regionally linked and shifting socioeconomic land use and migration processes in the Southern Levant, uh, which today, I think, after checking the uh, records of uh, uh, the Contenson's work and, uh, and uh, uh, later works in the Buta, that possibly um, uh, where we deal also with megasites in uh, the eighth millennium. Um, the dynamics of a megasite development in eastern uh, uh, Transjordanian highlands um, must have started by interacting over exploitation and overpopulation of the environmentally limited Mediterranean regions uh, west of the Rift Valley uh, um, and uh, certainly must have been forced by the attractive potentials of a less po uh, populated MPPNB Transjordanian Highlands and the vast eastern uh, grasslands uh, that of the Western Arabian Plateau. Um, I remember a publication of author uh, already claiming 
that uh, in the eighth millennium, these territories were still occupied by the latest hunter gatherers uh, um, in, yeah, all is in the MPPNB times. And he, today we know um, from the industries found during surveys there that uh, since the early PPNB, um, we have evidence uh, of these hunter gatherers and their ephemeral campsites. Um, this is co uh, covering all Northern Arabia. Um, the expensive development of the Mecca sites uh, uh, characterized also by a uh, north-south expansion of the uh, of the social economy, uh, um, which you can see by the uh, small. You see here, I inserted in the graph here. I, I think the bridgehead was the area of uh, Jericho of the population and concept pressure. And when uh, it migrated southwards, meaning that uh, uh, Ein Gazal witnessed a mega site phenomenon um, earlier than the southern um, Levant, and it retreated from there also earlier again than in the north. Um, from the mega sites, increasingly during the second half of the eighth millennium, polylinear incursions uh, by LPPN shepherds um, uh, took place into the eastern steppe using the grasslands there. Um, and of course, here they were competing um, with the territories of the late hunter gatherer groups. Uh, and the migrating angulates who also uh, uh, nourished on the grasslands. Near the junction of the late and final uh, PPNB around 7,000, uh, new subsistence mode had established in many parts of the Eastern steppes. This is uh, L um, to FPPNB uh, mobile pastoralism. Uh, um, which I think uh, is a candidate for niche agriculture. Um, if we see the results of uh, Zumia Fuji also, um, and indigenous pastoral venatorial uh, subsistence, which uh, I think is, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that, uh, uh, or I know that uh, while Abu Aziz and Muhammad Tarawna also think in this direction R is a subsistence form of its own right, um, which was uh, uh, slowly absorbing uh, uh, or merging with the late hunter-gatherers in the area. Um, these new and uh, attractively highly productive liveways appear responsible for uh, the collapse and transformation of the Jordanian, Transjordanian megasites at the end of the uh, late and final PPNB. However, I still believe that the megasites collapse or transformation must have been mainly prepared by the missing socioeconomic answers and uh, not found in time uh, for the grave and growth problems they have. Um, and uh, in addition, I think this uh, was cooperating with the climate uh, deterioration we have at that time. Um, the collapse or partly the transformation of mega sites led to a partial uh, reoccupation of former territories in the moderate Mediterranean zones. Um, in, in here I'm speaking about the Moza phenomenon, and, and I expect that more uh, sites will be identified uh, west of the Rift Valley, uh, uh, testifying um, the partial reoccupation. Um, it has to be questioned, in my opinion, 
if major translocations of populations were responsible for these developmental shifts, or to what extent these shifts sustained on themselves, we are outsourcing transformations in a way by the increase of populations and territorial, into territorial stress they created, um, resulting of course also in limited uh, uh, translocations, meaning uh, people pressed out um, of the systems. Uh, in that sense, uh, uh, it appears to me that the great eastward uh, migration uh, to the late Neolithic Black Desert, uh, as described by Gary uh, in 2021, uh, 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 appears to have been just uh, one of several incursions uh, happening between uh, two millennia. Uh, from 7,500. I said that uh, the new research, uh, including the research on Baja and Basta in the recent years, um, changed the understanding what a mega site is, um, uh, not in, in basic, in its basic traits, but uh, in, more, in more details. Um, they were confirmed to basic traits of the megasites uh, throughout the years, but uh, it turned out that our holistic frameworks and non-holistic approaches of, uh, on the megasites became insufficient um, and uh, 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 demanding basic revisions of the deep knowledge foci. Um, The new research from outside the megasite corridor I already mentioned. This is uh, the research on the kite economies um, and the research um, on the Neolithic in intrusions and adaptions into uh, Northern Arabia, the Arabia Peninsula. And not to forget uh, also the, the understanding of uh, epipaleolithic agglomeration um, and their tendencies to, for uh, uh, productive uh, features, which come close uh, to Neolithic uh, economies. So this has to be kept in mind when reconsidering the mega sites. Um, and for this, uh, at least our project has uh, introduced uh, uh, the concepts of commodification, territoriality, uh, habitus, um, and uh, uh, the thanatological approaches most recently uh, and yet uh, unpublished. This gives me a chance to, to hint on a new book um, published by Avi Gofer and Anna Ackerfeld, a sampler um, on uh, recent research uh, of uh, PPNV, uh, uh, death lore, and uh, burial practices. Um, and also uh, uh, for the new concepts, the uh, introduction of ethological and anthological perspectives is most necessary, uh, helping to exploit much more our deep knowledge. Uh, on the mega sites. I don't read the headlines to save times, time. Uh, where is the mega sites? I'm now turning into more details about the mega sites and what um, the results. Uh, on them from a Baja and Basta perspective are. Uh, the, our ethological and ontological um, research shows dispositions um, uh, and testifying a process from general to confined, tangible and intangible territories 
including the tech and cognitive uh, uh, territories. Um, this means uh, an ongoing separation during the LPPNB of territories um, and the establishment of um, confined corporate properties. Built territories become also more confined um, um, and uh, socioeconomic refuge uh, within the habitus communities, both on the village and the group levels. Um, we have um, secondary evidence only for defensive dip dispositions uh, and aggression uh, management, um, highly, uh, especially in, in the uh, evidence for the um, uh, social working uh, in these groups. Um, we have a highly productive use of built territory uh, in the shape of diversification and int intensification in household production. Uh, uh, there is intensifying intentional ritual uh, termination of territories. Um, including uh, uh, burning of households. Um, uh, we have new types of magic and ritual marking uh, of built uh, territories uh, also. Um, and now some examples for that. We have uh, ritually deposited terminated household inventories and events uh, and other practices of burying the terminated, uh, e.g. Uh, the burying uh, power article stands for this by Marion Benz. Um, we have uh, intramural uh, subfloor uh, uh, burial grounds um, in, in, uh, in the sites with status, wealth, and empath empathy uh, signals, uh, do a test deposits, uh, magic marking, and so on. Um, I may say at this point that most of uh, the statements I present here on uh, um, burying uh, uh, is our work uh, results by, uh, by a group headed by uh, Marion Benz and Julia uh, Kreski, uh, who are responsible in the project for uh, the, all things related to death. Uh, when uh, we have uh, testified uh, innovative surplus so technological productions uh, in all uh, or in most the crafts, uh, uh, e.g. to mention the bidirectional surplus plate production and plate trade uh, from, from Basta um, and the specialized ground uh, stone industry. But we have also uh, uh, the first evidence of clay vessel production and experimental menting with mortar-like uh, material for vessel production were carried uh, out by one um, of our, uh, Lucia uh, is doing this. Um, and if someone can help with a very strange feature, uh, we have heated copper minerals uh, in Baja, uh, still not investigated yet. Uh, also, symbolic commodities uh, play an increasing uh, role um, in the mega sites, um, and um, there, is, there is evidence of high pressure in abiotic and biotic uh, resources from the empiric uh, data we have. Um, I rush through here, uh, sorry, I rush through here, the evidence we have from uh, the 
from the burials. Um, we, we have uh, not only a single burials um, as in the case um, many other mega sites have. Um, Banja has, um, to my knowledge, uh, for the LPPNB mega sites, the only collective burials, or, uh, sometimes really burial chambers or uh, uh, burials using one of the tiny rooms only, uh, filled with uh, or furnished with uh, several inhumations, sometimes up to 15, uh, most of them uh, uh, children, but also adults, uh, all appearing like they are a snapshot of a current household burying its uh, death uh, in the basement underneath. Uh, from, these, from these burials, for instance, the famous Baja Degas Kam or uh, 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 masses of of beads, uh, uh, air, uh, sometimes arrowheads, mother of pearl uh, ornaments, uh, and so on. Um, these burials, like like also the single burials, show uh, quite a heavy use of red pigment. Pigment, uh, uh, but not only. Uh, um, spread as a liquid across the corpses, uh, coloring them, staining them, uh, including staining uh, the, the artifacts given uh, uh, to the dead. Um, the left, the left shows uh, unusual uh, upper armoring. Uh, attached to the body of um, the um, individual published um, by Marion Benz in uh, the article Burying Power, or the now famous uh, uh, necklace of Jamila, which you see a reconstruction of uh, in the lower left. It is now on exhibition in uh, the new Petra Museum. Here we have more uh, of the work of uh, Marion Benz. Um, in my view, um, all expressing uh, an otherworldly uh, reciprocity um, and um, we, we, we supported by acts of habitus statements in the burial practices. We have um, evidence which can be discussed as in individuation, legitimation, uh, and termination, and, uh, disabling uh, uh, the the dead and uh, respectively uh, their, their positions. Um, uh, in the upper left, uh, we have uh, the grave goods of a uh, uh, young man, uh, uh, which was um, described um, as an outstanding person. Uh, but not yet uh, as somebody um, who is a leader in the sense of a cone-shaped uh, chiefdom, uh, but rather a person still at the level uh, uh, of an egalitarian uh, community. Um, to the lower left, we have uh, here and here, uh, two um, child burials, uh, one of which with a very 
rich uh, cowrie uh, inventory, possibly representing uh, a belt and a cap like uh, cloth. Quite common are uh, acts of hiding and caching uh, in, uh, in the sites, um, often showing respect to previous uh, installation like the mural we have here uh, from Basta or uh, what Bodal Hermansen has um, published the hoard uh, from Basta, which seems to be uh, uh, a return uh, to the Ankersters for uh, extracted wall stones. It's a pit, uh, this hoard, it's in a pit, this hoard, uh, right where they have stolen uh, from the Ankersters um, building material. Uh, but this is only uh, two examples of quite more uh, features uh, we have. Um, Iania recently published uh, uh, an article about the bangles of Mozza, uh, where uh, truly some of these bangles uh, were found in association with arms uh, in the burials. Uh, we don't have uh, such evidence of a sandstone or limestone uh, um, uh, uh, stone rings in, uh, in the LPPNB, they never occur in, in graves. Um, and even their um, dimensions do not fit uh, to adult or sub-adult arms, uh, which uh, has led uh, to the understanding that maybe in the LPPNB, we have uh, in the Jordanian highlands, at least, they have served other purposes. Uh, I'm now turning, I'm now turning um, to a basic issue um, in understanding the megasites. And this is the identity or identity formation uh, we have attested in the mega site. Um, the mentioned uh, uh, household and death project um, of the German Research Foundation at the Pre-University of Berlin, uh, which was uh, co-directed uh, by Christoph Porschwitz, Marion Benz and me, um, has dug into a new understanding, um, which, uh, which has also produced the Neolithic corporate uh, identity aggregate um, on, the, on the right side. Um, we are thinking that, uh, that this uh, identity uh, formation has led in the LPPNB of the mega sites uh, to something for which I um, took the term habitus societies, but not in Bourdieu's uh, sense. Uh, the Neolithic identity of the mega sites. Um, um, was, was covering 
uh, all the spheres of, of life in these societies, uh, um, which was confined and uh, 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 was characterized by confined and segregated permanent, meaning resident, physical, and tangible, and intangible uh, uh, spaces, territories, meaning, meaning everything, not only uh, the, the, the physical space, but also uh, uh, cognitive territories. Um, it seems that uh, the social domain, domains of the self, meaning, meaning uh, uh, not an individual, but a individual uh, uh, has uh, uh, covered all the uh, family organization, clan and community organization, uh, including the cultural domains, uh, which we're using for modification regimes in producing or generating material and immaterial artifacts uh, for supporting uh, these uh, identities, um, including new uh, symbolic systems. Uh, the spiritual and moral value domains um, uh, um, was influenced by uh, these confined habitus um, um, uh, I, I just see here that I use the term idiocracy here uh, omit this uh, this uh, uh, refers um, to the northern uh, habitus uh, uh, system especially those uh, in the territories of northern Syria and uh, Anatolia. Uh, sorry for this. In the South, we deal always, uh, we, we only deal with uh, habitus uh, societies which were right, informal, and not needing uh, uh, um, uh, ideocratic uh, support uh, by imagery. Uh, I present now some thesis on the relational habitus communities, the definition uh, of habitus you find at the bottom uh, of the page, uh, not to be repeated here uh, by me. Uh, in my understanding, uh, the mega site uh, phenomenon altered the identity formation in the southern Levant considerably. Uh, um, by the establishment of extended uh, families, um, take this in quotation marks, families, um, um, because this uh, way of social economy fostered or required confined relational individuals and group selves more than this was the case in. Uh, the previous periods of uh, uh, PPN. Uh, Neolithic identity formation operates at a cultural and cognitive intersection from general uh, to confined identities and rep uh, rep reciprocities. Um, and it aims to identify, define, and discriminate from the other. And uh, this to an extent not developed uh, by hunter-gatherers. Confined identities are considered uh, to result from intens intensifying productive uh, uh, regimes, uh, while the more flexible identity formation of four aging years and its Neolithic relicts are expected to have followed a generalized understanding of identities and identity formation. Um, again, this is mirroring uh, uh, or following the confined respectively generalized reciprocities in the same milieu. Transjordan's LPPNB confined relational individuals and group selves of the mega sites 
established also the habitus aggregates uh, or regimes uh, which uh, made mobile pastoral and pastoral venatorial communities of the Eastern steppes flourishing and establishing. Uh, I think this was the, the birth zone of a social paradigm which uh, rules even the regions and traditional uh, life modes uh, of today, um, meaning uh, especially the habitus uh, societies of the Paleo Bedouins and the Bedouins. Um, yes. I'm now turning uh, to the end and uh, 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 giving a summary um, of what I see, how I see the megasite phenomenon being embedded uh, into uh, the larger development in the southern Levant. Uh, the megasites cannot be seen isolated anymore as a prosperous and regional episode. episode, uh, episode. They are uh, part of a complex and supra-regionally linked and shifting socioeconomic uh, affair uh, characterized by new land uses and uh, complex migration processes, uh, which uh, appear and I guess continued uh, even beyond the two millennia um, of the eighth and seventh millennium. Uh, considered here. Uh, I already mentioned, and this is a violet uh, arrow in the top, that uh, possibly north of Lake Tiberias, there was a movement into the Guta from the Mediterranean uh, zone uh, around the mid of the eighth millennium, uh, causing there uh, the uh, increase of settlement sites like Gurev and uh, El Ramat. Um, the dynamics um, of uh, the red arrows crossing the rift valley from the south must have started uh, by an overexploitation and overpopulation of the limited Mediterranean regions there. Uh, Mediterranean, I mean, sense of a plant and uh, geography. Uh, these, uh, these catchments really are limited there, and they generated. Um, of course, overexploitation and overpopulation because they are uh, so productive. And in, in that way, uh, they were pressing out people from there, uh, or uh, at least put pressure uh, in, on the settlements on the eastern sides, which were less large. Uh, which uh, I, I said they had three to four hectares probably, uh, especially in the south. And um, uh, of course, um, um, these uh, people uh, getting pressed uh, from the west uh, into the eastern uh, uh, hills, uh, they were uh, also knowing uh, about the vast uh, potential of the crestlands 
in the east. I mean, the area later occupied by the L to F PPNB step uh, uh, pastoral uh, social economy. Um, so at least at the beginning, um, also there is a dear decline in the mega sites for um, uh, hunted species. Um, uh, at least the hunted species of the eastern steppes uh, uh, may have been uh, increasing the attractiveness uh, to settle down in the Jordanian highlands. Uh, 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 during, uh, during the uh, LPPNB. Um, the, uh, we, have to, we have to imagine that uh, uh, at least refugia uh, in, uh, of hunter-gatherers existed. And even in the early uh, 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 establishment of uh, um, of the LPPNB, still there, uh, we have to uh, expect contacts between the uh, inhabitants of the mega sites um, and uh, hunter gatherers still in their uh, life mode in the eastern in the eastern steps. Um, uh, the Developing progressive population dynamics of uh, uh, of the mega sites uh, uh, forced, of course, to secure the productive life they we, we sustained on uh, by all sorts of uh, social and economic uh, diversification, uh, as I example before, uh, as I. Uh, explained before uh, by examples from Basta and Baja. Um, uh, and this diversification uh, certainly led in the, in the uh, subsistence sector uh, to an outsourcing uh, and exploitation of the, or gradually outsourcing and gradually exploitation of the Eastern grasslands. Uh, uh, from the moment uh, near site catchments uh, uh, were overexploited uh, by uh, 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 herds getting larger and larger. Um, so this beginning of uh, an rather independent pastoralism uh, which I expect uh, for the LPPNB in the area, uh, independent subsistence mode, independent groups from uh, the mega sites. Uh, 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 was, uh, and this is uh, by the, indicated uh, by, sorry, by these uh, uh, arrows. Uh, they certainly uh, came in contact uh, with uh, hunter-gatherers um, uh, uh, with whom they were competing uh, for the grassland uh, territories, the herders uh, and uh, those who were following uh, the uh, more or less migrating uh, ungulates. Uh, so I guess it took a few generations that the pastoral people uh, from the mega sites, possibly now already having an independent subsistence, were merging uh, with the hunter gatherers, uh, creating a uh, social economy and a subsistence of uh, their own right, of its own right and getting, uh, and getting probably in exchange with the late uh, and final uh, 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 megasites still 
uh, existing. Um, the megasites, uh, as I said before, uh, seem to have collapsed. Some have uh, transformed um, in the, uh, but at least in the south they collapsed. In in the North Jordan, they they more transformed um, into uh, the PPNC times. Um, and uh, the the major reason for their decrease in in uh, in size and importance and uh, productive levels, um, I, I see that the megasites uh, couldn't cope with the growth they have produced, uh, leading to uh, social uh, problems in the settlements. In addition, of course, there was a stress uh, by the 9.2 key event, uh, event uh, which uh, certainly has fostered also um, the move of people uh, to the desert uh, using um, or producing uh, the proteins uh, out there. Um, the collapse of the partly uh, or the collapse partly transformation of the megasites uh, that also as uh, the Mozart phenomenon uh, may indicate uh, uh, to a partial reoccupation of former territories uh, in the moderate Mediterranean zones. Um, I mean, especially the PPNC sites and early uh, pottery Neolithic sites uh, there, and of course, uh, in North uh, Jordan. Um, still, we have to be cautious, I think, with, uh, with understanding this as a, a major relocation. Um, Although the size of Mozart really um, uh, um, is, is, is very astonishing. Um, um, maybe not all uh, the uh, regions in uh, the favored zones west of Rift Valley had such developments, uh, but the near future, I hope uh, at least, uh, will show um, that megasite phenomena uh, are reversible. At the end of a lecture, I want to raise the question if exclusively major translocations of populations were responsible for the developmental shifts, or if these shifts mainly sustained on themselves by the increase of their populations and the territorial stress they created. Um, the rapid transformations within only a few uh, generations, including the establishment of the habitus social organization uh, that finally absorbed um, the latest uh, hunter-gatherers <coughs> Refugia in the in northern Arabia, uh, very securing and promoting uh, further the productive life phase during the eighth and seventh millennium uh, BCE in the southern Levant, and uh, the role of uh, major uh, relocations. Uh, I mean, understanding relocation as uh, uh, an event where uh, thousands of people decide to move from one region uh, to a far region um, may, uh, may has to be uh, questioned. Uh, rather, uh, the development 
or a le a less revolutionary um, development is behind um, all this that uh, outsourcing and splitting uh, uh, communities uh, are behind these features. Thank you so much uh, for your attention and I hope um, that you have many questions. Okay. Um, دارت هذه المحاضرة حول ظاهرة إنشاء وإزدهار مواقع ضخمة ميجا سايتس في الفترة المتأخرة من العصر النيوليثي ما قبل الفخار باء في المرتفعات الهضبية للأردن وأوضح جبل أنه لا يمكن اعتبار هذه المواقع الضخمة ظاهرة محلية معزولة وإنما هي إقليمية ظهرت كجزءا من تحولات اجتماعية واقتصادية وهجرة سكانية محلية وإقليمية في جنوب بلاد الشام خلال الفين الثامن والسابع قبل الميلاد بما في ذلك منطقة الغوط القريبة من دمشق يعتقد جيبل أن هذه التحولات قد بدأت في أعقاب استغلال مفرط واكتظاظ سكاني للمواقع الواقعة في مناخ البحر المتوسط والمحدودة جغرافيا بين البحر المتوسط ووادي الأردن وبالمقابل الإمكانيات الكامنة في الأراضي الشاسعة في المناطق الواقعة الشرقي الشق السوري الأفريقي الذي ما زال يقطنها الصيادون وازدياد طلب رعاة العصر النيوليثي ما قبل الفخار المتأخر على أراضي السهوب لقد أوضح جيبل أن الضغوطات السكانية في المواقع الضخمة مثل البسطة والبجعة لتأمين مصادر عيش بديلة مع ازدياد سكاني وبالمقابل مصادر اقتصادية محدودة مما أجبرهم لإيجاد وسيلتين جديدتين للعيش تربية المواشي في الحقبة المتأخرة من العصر النيوليثي ما قبل الفخار باء ومصادر ومصدر آخر يجمع بين الرعي والصيد في الهضاب الشرقية والبادية في نهاية نهايته أو بداية العصر النيوليثي الفخاري ويدعي أن هذه الطرق المعيشية كانت هي أيضا المسؤولة عن النيار النهائي لهذه المواقع الضخمة في نهاية العصر وإمكانية هجرة جديدة غربا إلى المواقع التي هجرها السكان وأخيرا أثار جيبل سؤالا جوهريا عما إذا كانت تحولات استمرارية أو أنها كانت تحولات سريعة وحتمية هدفها تأمين وتعزيز مصادر غذاء لمجتمع زاد عدده خلال الألف الثامن والسابع قبل الميلاد في جنوب بلاد الشام شكرا شكرا